Before coming here, we went to another structure called Palma Academy, about 900 meters away from here. And that Palma Academy has 472 learners. The structure is exactly like the one that collapsed. In fact, when you go there and you look under, you'll find that uh, the off-cut woods that are being used to provide the support for, for the first floor, some of them are already rotting. Therefore, uh, we have ordered that uh, facility to be closed with immediate effect today. And the 472 children to be divided in a pro rata basis between this school here, uh, which is called the new Kihumbuini, and Kihumbuini, which is just next door. Uh, beyond that, this morning I went to Ngong uh, Forest Primary School and I was shocked that there's a very large capacity there, which is unused. There are six large, new large classrooms. It was at about six o'clock, so I decided then to drive to the disaster site. And to my shock, I found most of the children coming to Ngong Forest Primary School were actually coming from that area where there was a collapsed building. All ages, all sizes, in green, in re resplendent green uniform. So what was, what bothered me is why some of the people in the area chose not to go to a government school where there is a very good facility. So that's where we are. We are going to continue doing this throughout the country. As, and as I said with the human face, but when the new year starts now, there are very many schools that we shall not allow to continue operating. Having said so, ladies and gentlemen, you are aware that uh, we had asked uh, the special uh, task force to look at, uh, to investigate th this process, and uh, the, report, the report is out, which I think will be given to you. But I would I'd want to say that uh, in conclusion of that report, uh, the school that uh, collapsed was registered for 340 pupils from ECD to Standard 8. On the day of the incident, the school had an enrollment of 900, which is almost three times uh, the number, which included 150 children under the daycare program. The high enrollment and lack of adequate safe physical facilities coupled with non-compliance to other standards like qualified teaching staff, sanitation facilities and size to enter the available registration certificate, null and void. Uh, we have then proceeded further, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these conditions do not warrant continued existence of the school and is thus recommended for revocation of the certificate and closure. But the details of the recommendations, ladies and gentlemen, are uh, there are five of them. The first one uh, is to revoke the certificate and close the facility. And uh, when I give you the, the report, you'll see the details of it. The second one, the Office of the Director of Criminal Investigation, the DCI, uh, who is going to be invited to, to carry on further inv investigation with regard to possible criminal culpability of the proprietor. Number three, which is the most important one, is with regard to the placement of our, our learners, which actually should have become number one. Ngong Road Primary School, no, Ngong Forest Primary School, it's a, it's a wonderful facility. And since the other side is the forest, all the children are coming from this other side. Forget about the administrative boundaries. As a cabinet secretary, I'm a cabinet secretary for the whole nation. And the distance is just about two kilometers. And it, it doesn't worry me because I saw with my own eyes that all the students at Ngong Forest actually come from there and they walk and they are very happy walking. And at six o'clock, I already saw their, their head girl there. So we, we are going to give Ngong uh, Forest uh, Primary School 480 pupils. 
Then we shall give Jamhuri Primary School 180 pupils and uh, Riruta Satellites 130 pupils, giving a total of 790. The playgroup children to remain at home because they are not so close to, uh, to, to school going age. The ministry to provide textbooks and desks for, a, for, for the additional learners. More specifically for our pet project, uh, the competency-based program, uh, Gaturu. Uh, the bo the, those books should be made available like yesterday because I'm not sure they were available in the private facility. We shall do that, sir. Number four, counselling and medical care. All the pupils to be counselled and debriefed. Let me just uh, take note to clarify one thing that uh, the students who seek medical care at Kenyatta National Hospital were 69 and uh, 67 have been discharged. The two remaining, one is in ICU and is uh, doing very well, speaking like a physician. There was no major uh, spine damage. Uh, one is to be discharged on Friday. There's a small swelling in the eye which we are dealing with. And once it is uh, well enough, then she will go home on Friday. So this medical care to be extended to one people still that is admitted at Kenyatta National Hospital. Actually, there are two because I have insisted as a physician that the other one should still be kept because she will be running around all over the place with an eye that is swollen. So she will be discharged on Friday. NGOs in slums should be regulated. And I want to give you my word as Professor George Albert Omore Magoha, son of Magoha, that we are going to regulate them to ensure that nobody trades with our children. It is good enough for you to help our children, but their lives must come first. And we are not going to allow people, they are not chicken or bees that you, you put in one place and then say you are doing one, two, three. The government standard is the gold standard. It is the gold standard. If you are going to argue that you, there is no space, you can build a good structure, but go up several stories, isn't it? Yeah, so we are not going to mince words with them. Uh, and we'll be monitored by authorities to ensure compliance. There's a NGO's regulatory authority, DCCs and chiefs, but as the superintendent of education in this country, I want to pray to God that the calamity that has befell us at uh, Ngandu does not happen again. So you are going to see us in other cities that have slums, like Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, and elsewhere. And this is an ongoing process. It is historical. So let us not dramatize it, but let us face it because we have lost innocent lives.